Uh, that's how Bill Burr builds his entire act is through analogy. Is mm. likes taking two dissimilar ideas and saying they're similar, mm. which sets to the audience an illogical equation. What's up, hot breath of verse? If you're looking to learn how to write jokes like Bill Burr, you have come to the right place. This is Hot Breath Podcast, the show where you learn comedy from the pros. I'm comedian Joel Byers. That is my dog, Guinness. And today, our pro is Jerry the Joke Dr. Corley. Over three decades of comedy writing experience for people like Chris Rock, Jay Leno, Bill Hicks. And now he is here to break down how Bill Burr writes his material. Enjoy. Uh, that's how Bill Burr builds his entire act is through analogy. Is mm. likes taking two dissimilar ideas and saying they're similar, mm. which sets to the audience an illogical equation. Uh, my girlfriend's like a smartphone, huh? Right? They're asking, they're sitting there with tension now saying, solve that. How is that true? I'm curious. Yeah. And all you do is solve for true. And the secret is it's got to be true for a s smartphone all by itself or a, per, uh, a girlfriend all by itself because if you had it if it if the verbiage that you come up with as the tie-in doesn't match a person or a girlfriend then it's not going to work it sounds forced it's going to be odd but if you say my ex like i say my ex it builds more of an antagonistic situation I said, my ex is like a smartphone. At any given time, I can usually find her at at least one bar. Mm -hmm. And that's, what a coincidence. That's so true. But that fits for a person or a smartphone. One bar being the signal, of course, right? So, but that's just by listing everything smartphone, right? So I was going to ask, how do you find the connection between the anchor groups? Yeah, so you take, you basically take, if I decide to use smartphone, say if I want to use, sometimes, uh, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm taking an element and comparing it to my wife, rather than finding traits about my wife and then finding the element to relate it to. Like if I, my ex-wife was an alcoholic, right? So I said, uh, so I, you, I played on that angle. I said, what else is alcoholic? What else is alcoholic? And funny cars, funny cars are alcohol fueled. Oh. So if I say my, my ex-wife, yeah, my ex-wife, she's alcohol, she's like a funny car, alcohol fueled. Now I have a quick joke there, but I'm working the other approach to it, the alternate approach, finding what is she like, and then finding something to relate her to. Uh -huh. This way I'm taking any element and comparing it to my ex-wife, and then listing everything I can think about using uh, subcategories of people, places, things, words, phrases, cliches, events. And, and I'll write that down, people, places, things, words, phrases, cliches, events, every single time I do a list to remind myself. Because when you're so close to it and you're going through the list, sometimes you just get too heady. And I'll go, oh, I didn't do any cliches here. What do people say when they say this? What people are involved in a smartphone? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? That guy. You know? And I'll just write down everything I can about a smartphone. Uh -huh. What else in smartphone in the minutia? The signal. What about the signal? The bars. Hey, what are some of the phrases? Hey, my phone's only had two bars. Bars, bars, double entendre. That's a bar, could be a drinking establishment. Fits from my ex-wife. Not because my ex-wife's like a smartphone, you know? At any given time, I can usually find her at at least one bar. Uh -huh. Same phrase fits for a phone. See? Wow. That's how that, that's, and you, you kidding? Bill Barr, Bill Bird uses analogy. That's what he uses through his whole thing. Once in a while, does a cliche drop in, you know? So it's a, you know, like we, this thing about this girl he was dating being aggressive. You know, she's aggressive, you know? She's like, I want you to choke me. I don't know if I'm comfortable with this, you know? What if I choke too hard, you know? What's, what's the pressure? What's the PSI? You know, what is that? Eh, I don't want to choke too hard. Like, then she's like, I want you to take me against my will. I was like, what is this, 50 shades of rape? Uh -huh. You know? And he does that joke, of course, our brains are wired to create expectations uh -huh. since we're children. Very yeah. definite expectations. Yeah. So think about it. We, you don't have to rush to a punch because the audience, their brain is already creating an expectation. You know, we don't have to, you don't have to do it. it it's so firm. Uh, you go like, um, uh, so if you say in your head, Fifty Shades of, that was such a popular book and movie that people are already creating the ending. So all you have to do is switch the last word. 
and it fits the scenario of him being uncomfortable because he's like, force you, you know? Mm -hmm. you know uh, it's like, take me against my will. What is it, Fifty Shades of Rape? Mm -hmm. And he gets a quick joke there because he shattered an expectation. And plus it's familiar. And oh my God, <laughs> so funny how that fits into this place right here and we didn't even see it coming. Yeah, and okay. you have, you, you're going through like a checklist of all this and you have like nine, there's like nine elements. And there were nine la psychological laughter triggers. Okay. Nine stimuli that the brain respond to um, that triggers laughter. Okay. Surprise, embarrassment, superiority, release, configurational incongruity, recognition, ambivalence, and, uh, and coincidence. Uh, did I get all those? That's about nine. Uh, sometimes I forget, right? So then there are 13 major comedy structures. And so uh, the structures pull the triggers. Okay. So, and not every joke just has one. Some have multiple. One, some have ones where you're like, oh, well, that's kind of this and this. You know, this is compare and contrast and uh, this. Yeah, it can be both. Just like you'll have literary uh, scholars arguing over whether something really fulfills the obligation of meeting complete irony, you know? Same thing, you know? If you, uh, you don't have to, it's art. So, and also you have to remember, as Picasso said, you gotta know the rules before you can break the Boom. rules, Boom. you know? It's an art. Yes. So don't get all wrapped up and it's gotta be this way, you know? Yes. But a lot of times you can tweak and go, oh, if I do make it this way, that joke snaps, right? And that, that's what part of comedians trying to just get away with attitude. They're not mm -hmm. learning the rules first before they break them. Right. They right. just see like, Bill Burr's just up there talking. I was mm -hmm. like, no, he's worked over half his life at this art form, mm -hmm. you know? And he says, the first five to seven years of my career, I did one and two liners because I had to know oh, how to write a joke. Yeah, yeah. and that, yeah. that's what I did too. When you know how to write a joke, when you're on, on the move, when you're in the flow, mm -hmm. it's easier to see the opportunities or recognize the opportunities and the mechanics and the structure to be able to spin something and go, oh, I just put two ideas together. I'm gonna now list real quick and put it up. Oh, there's, the, yeah. there's the line, you know, when he does like go, he was like, everybody wants to bang a hot chick. You know, but uh, you know the the guy working at Home Home Depot can't because he's not a celebrity. Besides, chicks don't dig lumber, right? That's what he says. That's his joke, and it's like all he did was take something from Home Depot. Yep. Every time I see the name, I, if somebody says Home Depot, I see a pallet of two by fours, and he says lumber, and boom, that triggers that image and it makes us laugh. What a coincidence. Thank you for watching Hot Brethren and Sister. And if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel and check out Jerry's full interview right next to my head.